screen. Are we good? All right. So yesterday we talked about if you have a square root, you are going to, to undo a square root by squaring. So I'm just going to actually rewrite the problem up here so it's a little bit bigger. So we got a square root of x minus 4 equals x minus 4. So yesterday we, we uh, first isolated our square root, which we've already got it isolated. It's by itself. The next step was to undo the square root by squaring. And in algebra, what we've always been learning is that you have to balance your equation. Anytime you do something to the left side, you got to keep that those scales balanced. You got to do the same thing to the right side. So we're going to square the right side. On the left side, we're going to get x minus 4 because all that happens is a square root with a square undoes each other, and we're left with x minus 4. On the right side, this is where we're going to have to use FOIL. This is really x minus 4 times x minus 4. And if you want to write that out, you can. Or you can just use FOIL. So we're going to have first x times x, which is x squared. I do the outsides and insides together. Outsides will be negative 4. Insides will be negative 4x, which will give me negative 8x. And then lasts are going to be negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16. Now what you should notice now is we moved into a type of equation called a quadratic. And we learned in uh, chapter 4 and, and then continuing in chapter 5, quadratics are going to have two separate solutions. So whatever this power is of your variable, that's how many solutions the problem is going to have. To solve a quadratic and, and how we're going to practice solving, because we're going to get more practice with... Uh, solving by factoring, is we're going to get it set equal to zero. So we're going to get zero on one side. So I'll subtract my x over, and then I'll add 4 over to get to the other side over here. And then I'll get x squared minus 9x plus 20. So we've got our algebra from yesterday where we're going to square both sides, and then it causes us to use a FOIL method, and then now we're into those quadratics. Once everything is set equal to zero, now you're ready to factor. And we are really practicing just factoring these, these quadratics. So this quadratic, since it's got three terms, it's got the x squared, negative 9x, and the 20, it's going to factor into two binomials. And this, I just think of it like a little number riddle. Since the a term is 1 right here, both of these are going to be x and x. And then the numbers that are going to be part of my binomials need to multiply to positive 20, add to negative 9. So can anybody think of two numbers that would multiply to positive 20, add to negative 9? And hint, they're both going to be negative. Excellent. 5 and 4. And they both have to be negative to get to that negative 9. From there, now we're going to set each of these factors equal to 0. And I don't even really show that. I'm just going to think what number minus 5 is 0. That's going to be a 5. What number minus 4 is going to be 0. That's going to be a 4. So there's my two solutions. X is equal to both of those. Now what happens is when we're squaring and we're dealing with, with these square roots, um, and this is going to be a topic that we talk about continuing in Chapter 6, is, is um, you can't square root a negative number and get a real answer. So there are going to be some situations where we could have extraneous solutions. So, so we do need to check both of our answers back in the original equation. So we're going to take 5 and put it in for x and solve it out. And then we're going to put 4 in and solve it out. Well, first, if I put 5 in, 5 minus 4 underneath my radical is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. So the left side ends up being 1 when I put a 5 in. The right side is just 5 minus 4. That ends up being 1. So what that tells me is that the answer of 5 is a true answer. So that one is for sure going to be one of my answers. But when I'm dealing with these square roots, the square roots, they don't always uh, accept all numbers. It's like you can't square root negatives and get a real answer. That would give you an imaginary like we talked about. So you got to check these answers. So I'm going to put a 4 in now. Put a 4 in for the x. Put a 4 in for the x. Well, 4 minus 4 is 0. Square root of 0 is actually 0. You can square root 0. It would be 0. 4 minus 4 is also 0. So that's also a true statement. So both of these check out to be true. So you could get the possibility of two answers. You could also get the possibility of only one of them working, or sometimes both of them don't work. If both don't work, you just leave your answer block answer uh, box blank so you don't even need to put anything in so if you just leave it blank that means that none of the answers were a solution if you have two you're gonna hit comma 
there's going to be our two solutions that make this equation true, and then it's going to um, go through the work. And the, uh, the checking, that's what we did just at the end. Take the values, put them back in for X, see if they are, see if they are true. So again, you could have possibility of two answers, one answer, or sometimes both of them don't work just for, you know, square roots. You know, they don't accept all numbers. So sometimes that's going to be how it works. Let's take a look at our, our second type, which is going to be a level three. And uh, thanks for your patience here. I got to get this erased. So again, we're going to be dealing with square roots, and we're going to undo the square roots by squaring. So we're sticking to that type of inverse operation. But here, I've got a square root of x plus 1 equals square root of x plus 1, x plus 3. Now, our, our uh, goal was to get that square root alone before we were going to square to undo it. Well, here I got a square root of x plus 1. So I've got an extra 1 here. I would subtract that over. Well, when I subtract it over, it would just become a negative 1 on this side. And now I've got the same issue going on over here. So even though I isolated the x over here, I'm still dealing with, I'm still dealing with uh, that negative 1 over here. That's okay. We're still going to be ready to do this inverse operation to cancel out this square root. So on the right side, I'm going to cancel out my square root by squaring. So that's going to give me x plus 3. On the left side, I am going to square. And remember, algebra, we got to keep our whole left side balanced with the right side. So I'm going to square everything. Well, this is similar to what we just did in the last problem. This is going to be x plus 1 times, uh, excuse me, square root of x plus 1. And you can probably see what's happening. What process are we going to have to use to multiply those? We're going to have to use FOIL. The first terms are both square roots. That's OK. Square root of x times square root of x is just x. My outside terms are square root times 1, square root of x times 1, which is um, square root of x. And then the inside terms are square root of x times 1, which is also the square root of x. If I have a square root of x plus another square root of x, that's two square roots of x. So my inside and my outsides will add up to two roots of x. And then my last terms, 1 times 1, will just add up to 1. Now looking at this particular problem, I do not have any square, so I don't have a quadratic. This one, I'm just going to use algebra. So let's get the x's on the same side. Subtract x over, subtract 1 over. So I'll get 2 roots of x equals, well, the x's are canceled out, equals 2. From there, I'm just continuing. I'm trying to get this x alone. This goes back to yesterday. Get that radical alone first. Square root of x is equal to 1. Square both sides. This one is, is kind of goofy because it's just a 1 squared, which is still going to be 1. So we'll get x is equal to 1 for my final answer. Go ahead and check that. And uh, um, if you're wondering why there's not two answers, that's because this one did not end up being a quadratic when we foiled it out. Okay, that's okay. We only got one answer. If you only get one answer, we don't even need to, um, to check that because uh, that's got to be the true answer. We don't have any extra answers that we need to check. So we submit. Looks like the left side was going to be 2 because um, 1 plus 1 is